Hey guys, Jan here, codingwithjan.com. So, I finally remembered my password, and today we're back with some development content. Specifically, we're going to be looking at Shopify's section rendering API, which is becoming more and more important in theme development. I'll show you what it is, where it's used, and how you can get started. Cool to see you, should be a lot of fun, and let's dive right in. Okay, so I'll make it quick. The section rendering API can be used to update certain sections on a store without reloading the entire page. Yeah, that's the main purpose. And for example, on the Dawn theme on the card page, you can observe this very well. Um, if you change the quantity of one of the card items, you can see that a few things get updated, right? For example, the, the card line itself, uh, the total amount gets updated, the small item count here in the header navigation might be a little small for you to see. Let me actually zoom in so you can see this better. So if we update the quantity, also this card bubble here gets updated. And all of that happens without reloading the entire card page. Now, if we want to inspect what happens behind the scenes and what kind of requests are made in the background, we can bring up the Chrome developer tools. So I would right click somewhere on the page and then go to inspect. And specifically, we're interested in the network tab because that's where all the requests are. And in here, the first thing I would do is filter for fetch and XHR requests. And if you already have a bunch of requests in here, you can also clear this out uh, just for better overview. And now let's try to change the quantity again. So I'll just change it from, let's say 11 to five. And here we can already see the change request coming in. Uh, let me make this a bit larger so we have a better overview. And then once we click on the request, we are provided with a few additional details. Yeah, so it usually starts with the header. Here we can see the request URL, like which URL this request was posted against. Uh, in this case, it was made against my development store and then slash card slash change. So apparently this post request is made against the card API, which kind of makes sense because we're trying to change the quantity here. It's a post request and the status is okay. Yeah, so everything went well with this request. All the other details don't matter too much. Then let's switch to the payload tab right here because this is very interesting. This is the data that's sent along with this request. And yeah, first we find the card line we're referencing. Yeah, so this is the, the first product or the first item in our card that we're trying to change. Here we also see the new quantity. So we want to change it to five. That's pretty much the card change request. And then down below, we can see an additional field here called sections. And that's the section render API in action. Yeah, so we basically provide an array of all the different sections that we want to update or re-render. And in this case, it seems we want to update the card items, the card icon bubble, the card live region text, and the card footer. Yeah, so with the section rendering API, we can request up to five sections at a time per request. Uh, but here it appears we only needed four of them, yeah, namely the ones you see on the screen. Okay, so far so good. That's the request we are making against the server. And now let's also take a look at the response that we got. So that's in the response tab right here. And first of all, we find a bunch of data points related to the card itself. Yeah, usually when you request a card update, for example, you get the entire new card back in like different data points. Now, for example, the total price, the item count, and then also all the different items with all their properties. Um, so this has nothing to do with the section rendering API per se, that's rather the card API. But then down below, let's actually see, we should find one field called sections. And then we have, it's basically structured data where we always find the section that we requested for example, the small card icon bubble that I showed you earlier. And then next to it, we find all the HTML of the updated section. Yeah, and this is awesome because now we can just extract all this HTML and replace the current section on the page. So in a nutshell, we just request the sections that we want to update. Let's say after some data has changed or after some user interaction. And now we just have to replace the current element on our page with the HTML that we got from the response. And yeah, that's the section rendering API in summary. All right, now if all of this is new to you, like dealing with a network tab or Ajax requests in general, then definitely keep an eye open for the trainings I offer, specifically the JavaScript mastery training. It's one of the best trainings I've designed to this date. It will save you a bunch of time learning all this stuff. 
We can also help you raise your hourly rates, find new work, get hired by agencies or form partnerships. Like the results people are getting speak for themselves. I genuinely can't recommend it enough. But either way, let me also show you how we can use the section rendering API ourselves because it's actually not too difficult. In order to do this, let's clear everything out in the network tab and then jump over to the JavaScript console, which is where we can like write and test JavaScript quickly. And let's keep it super simple. Let's just type fetch. And then inside the URL, we want to make the fetch request against. So I'll just do it against the base address because you can, you can use the section rendering API from any page. And then I want to add an additional parameter to my request, namely section underscore ID. Yeah, if you want to request multiple sections, then you have to use the parameter sections as in plural. But if you just want to request one single section, then you have to use section underscore ID. Yeah, a lot of people get confused by that. And then we also have to provide the section name. So in this case, we can use the card icon bubble because we've seen that before. And it's also the exact same file name. So card-icon-bubble. And you would find that in the section folder of the Dawn theme. So let's add it right here. Card-icon-bubble. Hit enter. And now in the network request, we should see this fetch request. So it's right here. And again, here we can see the request URL. This time we made a GET request, status is okay, so everything went through. Payload, this time we don't really have a pay payload except our yeah, query parameters, section ID, that's the one we requested. And in the response, we should now get the HTML for the card icon bubble. Yeah, so here's the SVG, and then we have the card item count, so five items in card. Uh, we might even be able to see the preview here. Um, yeah, kind of, but then also the CSS rules don't apply, so it's actually not, not that useful. Uh, I think the response is more useful in this case. Yeah, so this is literally how easy it can be to use the section rendering API. You just have to specify the section you want, and then with the result of that fetch request, you can replace the current elements on the page, for example. Okay, I feel this was cool so far, but now let me also draw your awareness to something else that's super exciting. But in order to do this, I need to backtrack for one second and quickly touch on the main difference of liquid code and JavaScript. Some of you might already know this, but I want to have everyone on board and it never hurts to have a quick reminder. So for the sake of this demonstration, I created a super plain product page, yeah, possibly the worst product page you've ever seen. Uh, it's just an H2 with the product title and then we have the product price here. If the product is available, then we also have this small note here in stock. And then we just put out the product description followed by an add to cart button that doesn't even work, but doesn't matter. Yeah, so this is what the product page looks on the front end, extremely plain. Hope I didn't promise too much. But my main point here, or the thing I wanna show you is that on the front end, all this liquid code is evaluated already, right? So we get the product title, we get the, the price, we see the small message here in stock. And even if we inspect the page, we only see the hard data. Yeah, we see the, the product title right here. We can find the product price. We can see the small in stock message, but there's no liquid code left. Like liquid never makes it to the front end. And it's because liquid is a server side templating language, which means all the code runs on Shopify server, but then we only send the result of that computation to the user, to the front end. Yeah, we only send the result, like the product title in this case, but we don't send the actual liquid code Yeah, because the browser doesn't even know how to read liquid code. And yeah, just remember, no liquid code ever made it to the front end. And this also means like traditionally, liquid can only do things before the page loads. Like after the page is loaded, there's no liquid code left. And therefore we also can't use liquid to, let's say, react to a button click or react to user input because there's literally no liquid left. Now JavaScript on the other hand is kind of the exact opposite because JavaScript is a client side language. And that means a script tag like this is sent to the user as sort of plain text. And the user is the one executing the code or the browser, better to say. So in this case here, we want to print a small alert message like item added to cart whenever the add to cart button is clicked. And let me show you that on the front end as well. 
So unlike the liquid code, we can indeed find the small script tag right here. And this contains the exact JavaScript that I just showed you. Yeah, the JavaScript was sent to the user. And now if I click the button, we should also see the small alert message. Yes, it's right here. And that's because JavaScript is executed in my browser. It runs on the client side. And therefore, JavaScript can only do things after the page is already loaded. Yeah, because I needed to download this script here in order to execute it. And therefore, JavaScript is perfect if you want to react to user input, if you want to react to button clicks, because it can literally only do stuff after the page is loaded. Yeah, so traditionally, Liquid can only do things before the page loads. JavaScript can only do things after a page is already loaded. But using the section rendering API, we're kind of in this unique position where we can now re-execute Liquid code even after the page is already there. Yeah, because we can request certain sections and then all the liquid code inside would get executed again. And let me show you this right here. So this is the product page for the coffee Vietnam. And I could equally request products slash coffee Ethiopia. Yeah, the other coffee blend we've seen before. And then request my plain section. So section ID equals plain. That's how I call it the file. And then let's make that fetch request. And then in the network tab, I should get the response. Yeah, so here we get all the data for the Ethiopian coffee. So different product title, different price. It's also in stock, different description. And all the liquid code in my section file got evaluated again without me having to reload the entire page or visit a different page. And now I could, for example, append all this data down below or depending on what kind of feature I want to build. I'll show you one example of this in action. So in the JavaScript training I mentioned, we're building this product comparison feature where you can add different products here. And then whenever you add one, all the data gets fetched with the section rendering API. And then you can compare like the different stats, the different price points, like you would find on other popular websites. Also excellent project to have on your portfolio, by the way. Or another place where this is used, also very new, is the variant select mechanism on product pages. So in the past, it was built slightly different. But nowadays, if you select a new variant, they basically just re-render the entire product section here based on the newly selected option values. And this is important because the variant limits got increased. Like in the past, you could only have 100 variants per product. Nowadays, you can have up to 2000. So the old way of handling this is becoming very in-performant if you have a lot of variants. And therefore, they had to build it differently. But it's also more complex, deserves a video on its own. It's already covered in the training, though. Uh, I don't want to oversell it here, though. <laughs> it, is, it is really good, though. Um, anyways, I will catch up with that on a, on, a, on a separate video. But yeah, just to be aware of and just to show you some examples of where this is used. All right, guys, and that's all I have for today. I feel this was a good intro. Yeah, we've seen the section rendering API, what it is, what it's used for, how we can update sections or certain parts of the website without reloading the page, how it allows you to re-execute liquid code, which we couldn't do traditionally. And um, yeah, we've also seen some examples of where this is used in practice. Hope this was a good starting point. Let's call this a good comeback. And uh, yeah, if you got any questions, as always, let me know. You know where to find me. And what do I always say? It's so long. <laughs> uh, probably thanks for watching. Hope you learned something new. Have an amazing rest of your day. I'll catch you later. Bye.